You might have heard of Newton's method or seen the three blue one brown video on the topic. It's a method invented by Isaac Newton, mainly used to approximate the roots of higher order polynomials. For example, this fifth order polynomial. In this video, I want to show you an implementation of this method in this Desmos graph, but also a new way of looking at Newton's method using Taylor polynomials. First, the basics, the way that Newton's method works is by using this single formula. What you do is input an initial guess value for what you think could be one of the roots of the polynomials, which in this case is represented by the slider called x0, and also this red dot on the graph. You can see that as I move the slider, the red dot moves left and right. What Newton's method says is put x0 into this formula, which takes into account the polynomial that you're trying to approximate as well as its derivative, and it outputs a new x value for you to try, which I've called x1a in this graph and labeled by this purple dot. As you can see, when I move the x0 value close to one of the roots of the polynomial, the x1 value is almost always even closer to the root. And this works even when I'm very far away from a root, like here or here. You might ask, why do we need this method at all? Can't you just look at where the red line crosses the x-axis to find the roots? But you have to remember that Desmos is doing millions of calculations to be able to plot this graph, which no human in Isaac Newton's time could do. A closer version to what a mathematician actually sees when analyzing this polynomial would be to turn off the curve entirely and just moving the slider back and forth. You can see now why without the visual aid of the polynomial being plotted in front of you, Newton's method is so useful at approximating the roots of polynomials. And now you might ask, where did this equation come from? Why is it that when you take the x value and subtract it by this fraction composing of the function and its derivative, that you get this other x value which more closely approximates the roots of this polynomial? To answer that question, we have to look at the tangent line of the polynomial constructed at x0. In this case, the tangent line is the black line. The red dot is the x and y value of x0. And you can see that where the black line intersects the x-axis, this new blue dot is formed, and the x-coordinate of this blue dot is the approximation generated by Newton's method. The traditional way of deriving this formula is by using a geometric argument, comparing the lengths of this line of the triangle to this line of the triangle. What I want to do instead is use the Taylor polynomial of this tangent line. You can see that this is the equation of the tangent line, as you would get from using Taylor's formula. What this allows us to do is, instead of solving for the roots of the original polynomial, which is often an impossible task, we can instead simply find out where the tangent line crosses the x-axis. And that's a much easier thing to do, since this approximation is a line, which is a much simpler thing to deal with than a fifth order polynomial. To find the coordinates and therefore x value of this point, all you have to do is set this equation equal to zero and rearrange for x. And you can see that after doing that, you end up with the equation of Newton's method. What I want to do is extend this new way of looking at Newton's method into second order Taylor polynomials. So instead of cutting off Taylor's formula at a first order approximation or just a tangent line, what you can do is extend it to a whole polynomial. In this case, not only are you using the function and its first derivative, but you're also making use of its second derivative. And by doing that, you can construct this second order Taylor polynomial, which very closely approximates the original polynomial at any given point. A similar method as before can be used to find where this quadratic crosses the x-axis. You set this whole equation to zero and use the quadratic formula to find the roots. And because this is a quadratic, you often get two solutions. In that case, the easiest thing to do would be just to choose the new x value that is closest to your original guess. That's because if your original guess is already very close to one of the roots, the closer root of the quadratic would be the one that you're looking for. There are also cases when you're very far away from a root where you can get no solutions to the quadratic at all. And in that case, the easiest thing to do would just be to take the x value of the vertex of the quadratic. Having experimented a lot with this extension of Newton's method into second order Taylor polynomials, I can say that in certain cases, it does indeed approximate the solution quicker than the linear method. The two main problems are that since you have to use the quadratic equation every time, this method is certainly computationally slower than the linear method. 
And also, like I discussed just now, there are many edge cases where you can have two solutions or no solutions, and that makes the whole method even more complicated. So I'm by no means saying this is an improvement or a replacement to the original Newton's method using a tangent line, but this is certainly another way to look at Newton's method. That's all I have for this video. If you want to access this Desmos file and move around with the sliders yourself, you can get a link to it in the description below. Other than that, thanks for watching.